Hey, 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 what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another exciting, hit scratching episode of Insane Disappearances. Tonight, I am going to do a little discussion about the smiley face killers and the significance they have with all of these water deaths of these young college men in these different parts of the state, like Pennsylvania and all the other places where they be disappearing at. Um, I've already talked about a couple of them already, um, like um, uh, Dakota James, of course, and then the new guy that I heard about so much. Um, his name was a uh, ooh, he's a new guy um, that I that I just that I found out about. Can't remember his name right now, but I'll, I'll look it up, you know, in a few minutes. But the guy I want to talk about, since I haven't talked about him yet, was this young Navy uh, veteran, Will Hurley. Now, Will Hurley, if you remember, you probably heard about him um, a long time ago on some of uh, on one of the interviews that David Politis gave on Coast to Coast AM. Now, this is a pretty famous uh, case here. Well, I won't say famous, but you heard him talk about it a lot on Coast to Coast AM. And this one, like I said, is about a young man named Ron Hurley. Uh, his girlfriend had called, uh, well, he called his girlfriend, you know, of two years. Her name is Claire Mahoney. Uh, she had offered to pick him up, you know, uh, in an unfamiliar place that he was in. You know, he was very unfamiliar with it, uh, in, in the Andy area itself. You know, while on the phone with his girlfriend Mahoney, um, you know, Hurley asked, you know, his, um, he asked for his exact location. And a passerby yelled out 99, uh, 99 uh, Shua Street. Uh, now, nobody really knows who this guy is. You just hear, it, it, they just probably heard him over the phone yelling out 99 uh, Shua Street, just out of the blue. You know, he probably was just, he probably was, he was probably loud out there and he was probably trying to talk over all the noise so she could hear him you know it was probably a busy street and the person that was near him heard him ask that question and he just decided to help him and you know he shouted it out for him to hear um now this part was the crazy part now his girlfriend was no more than about maybe two minutes away she was practically around the corner and by the time she got around to the area, and while she was still on the phone with him, his cell phone battery went dead. Uh, now, uh, now, she said she got to 99 Nashua Street uh, a minute or two later, and he was, nowhere to, he was nowhere to be found. Now, she beeped, she yelled, she looked around, she walked around, she drove around for about like an hour, and was right she was literally right around the corner you know but when she got there he was gone and nobody knows what could have happened to him uh now someone was at the scene the passerby who yelled out 99 Nashua street you know uh now his body was eventually found across from the Nashua street jail which was located 200 uh it, it, it well, the jail was located at 200 Nashua street in boston um, so it's not always just in Pennsylvania, it's all over the state, you know, or, or all over different parts of the state. Um, now as far as they know, uh, there were no indications of Hurley, that Hurley was even drunk at that time. Um, he had to be at work at 6 a.m. the following morning, and... By all reports, he was a punctual and hardworking individual. So, for anybody to think that maybe he got drunk and he fell in the river, now they don't even mention that part. They just mention the part where he, uh, you know, disappeared from the area where he was at. Where they say he was found near the uh, Nashua Street Jail. And I'm pretty sure the more I read, it'll probably say he was found in a body of water. Because I mean, if this is something that is related to the um smiley face killings then then he would definitely be found in a, in a body of water so um but these are just like 
if this is just information coming from other people. Um, now it says here um, they don't understand why people just walk into water. You know, um, nah, this this person is saying that they've been drunk before, but never uh, to the point where they would fall in a, you know in a river. <laughs> you know, so and uh, <laughs> and like you know, he said that he, he or she said. Um, you know, if they did, they would know how to swim anyway. You know, and like I said, the last guy, um, Dakota James, he was a excellent swimmer. So there was no reason at all for him to actually be in the water dead if he knew how to swim that well, if he was on a swim team. But, you know, all these cases, they're trying to pinpoint exactly who is doing this and why. Now, as far as what I can see, a lot of the people that are being found in these bodies of water, um, they're always found in mysterious ways. Now, one guy, they said, he, I think it was Dakota, they said that he didn't have any um, markings on his body to indicate that he was beat down or not in, unconscious or anything. He had no um, no type of like blunt force object injuries on his body at all not even a crack over the head he was just in the water and was found dead so what could have made him fall in the water in the first place why was he even anywhere near the water you know what made him fall in you know but they always want to they, they want to keep blaming the the smiley face killers just because you see a smiley face in the area now think about it how many serial killers this is not, I've already talked about this before but how many serial killers do you know leave behind enough evidence to state that this was a human element type killer? We're talking about people who are mysteriously vanishing from the areas where they were hanging out at and then all of a sudden a couple of days later they're found in a body of water near the area where they were at or maybe even a hundred yards away from or a hundred miles away from where they were not really understanding how they got there in the first place. Cause there's no tire tracks to indicate that they were picked up there were no other footprints other than their own if they were any found which i doubt it but th that's that's the case how do you think that a human could do something that accurate without leaving anything behind every single criminal has left something behind a hair follicle uh pieces of clothing that may have got torn off by a piece of barbed wire or maybe even a twig or something you don't know. Maybe he got caught on something, you know, and it ripped the pants. I don't know. But there's always evidence. Now, if you're smart enough to cover your feet with these little, um, they're like little footsie, uh, like things that you put on your feet, kind of like uh, that gets their disinfectant slippers or whatever, and then put gloves on your hands and all this stuff. If people are elaborate enough to think like that, you only see that stuff in the movies every time, like um, Mr. Brooks. That movie was out of this world. I love it. He basically thought of everything. He was very methodical with his killings. You know, we're talking about gloves on and a plastic bag that was tied to the wrist of his hand, so that when he shoot, when he shot the the gun, the bullet casings would fall into the bag, leaving no evidence behind. You know, and that's very clever. You know, I even watched Ocean's Eight today, and that that was clever too. You know, so you got. All these clever thinking criminals that be in the movies, but the actual people that do them aren't that clever. You know, you get in, you do your job, and you get out just so you won't get caught. Or if they hear somebody here scream after they hear a gunshot, or hear somebody grunting from them being stabbed, or whatever, or maybe they may hear a fight, then a gunshot. They're gonna be called 911, and you're gonna be found. You know, so they go in, they get it, they get it done, they get out. Now, in cases like this, these people are being found dead in bodies of water without a reason for even dying in the first place. Never had any alcohol in their system, especially if they came from a bar. They even said the same thing. They don't, they don't think that um, that there was any information that stated that uh, Will Hurley was actually drunk. At, you know, that night he he uh, vanished. So, but as far as the smiley face killers, killers. I don't know. I just don't think that these so-called smiley face killers have something to do with it. Maybe they want to have something to do with it because it's such an elaborate and clean crime that no one can seem to figure out how it's done. 
they know that they took the credit for it, they'd never be found. They would never know how to look for them. So what do they do? They see that it happened. They check out the body. They monitor this stuff. And they put their little smiley face on there. Then they're getting all the credit, but nobody knows who they are. Because those people never did it. Think about it. If they did it, they would have left something behind. How do you do something like that and not leave anything behind but a body? And the body don't even tell you how long. It tells you how long they've been in the water, but it don't tell you how long they've been missing. Let's just say you've been missing for nine days, but you only been in the body. You, you only been in the water for three days. That means you were held somewhere. But the question is, by who? These same people were able to lift you up, take you somewhere, hold you hostage, and do whatever it is they did to you, and drop you in the water without even indicating you was even there in the first place. They just know you was here, and now you're there. Whatever happened in between is a complete mystery. That's the part that everyone's trying to figure out. What happened between the time when they was at the place and then when they ended up in the water? What happened to them? That's the biggest problem because the person is dead. You can't find out. They don't the ones that can tell you. Now, if there was any evidence on the body to indicate where they were, then you could do that, but there isn't. They're always found with, they're, they're like half clothed. Never any kind of indication in the body that states they were drugged or stabbed or shot. Nothing. No bruises. Nothing. It's just a dead body sometimes. In some cases, you may find GHB, but nobody knows how it even got there in the first place. They weren't drinking. There was no alcohol in the system. That's the only way it can be put into this. Well, not the only way, I'm pretty sure. But that's the actual way that it's done. So, what you, I mean, what, what you going to say? But, um, yeah, smiley face killers. For it to be going on this long and for them to be labeled and accused of committing these crimes, yet they can't seem to find out one person that that um, actually has something to do with the smiley face killers. No killers at all. They don't know what they look like. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they do. They don't know what they do for a living. They just know that these are smiley face killers or they just see a smiley face in the area where these, person, where these people are being found dead. That's not saying that they got something to do with it. They're just saying that there's a marking there. Now, if it's a smiley face, they want to be accused of that. They want that credit because it's a crime that nobody can figure out. And most criminals want to commit a crime without being caught, right? I won't say most criminals, all criminals. They want to commit a crime that's not being, of not, you know, that won't get them caught. You know, some of them even actually look at movies, try to see if they can do that. But it's so elaborate and so put together it takes five years to even pull it off okay we're talking about killings that have been going on for hundreds of years it dates back to like the 1700s people disappearing without a without a trace you know and people keep looking at it as folklore just because you read it in a book somewhere because of a story that somebody you think thought up that doesn't mean that it ain't real. They had to have gotten it from somewhere. And even if they weren't the ones that thought it up, they probably wanted to take the credit for it. And they knew nobody was going to find out, you know, that they were the ones that wrote it or they weren't the ones that wrote it. I mean, what are they going to say? Oh, he didn't write it. So, okay, you don't get the credit. They could say that if they knew. But I'm saying that to say this. When you're dealing with stuff like this and there's no evidence and you look at the other evidence that was brought together by actual, you know, by uh, law enforcement about criminals that kill people on a regular basis. They always got evidence. But these killings, no evidence. All you got is a body of water and a body. And that's it. Oh, that and a smiley face. A red smiley face. That ain't telling you nothing. That's just saying that these people, whoever they are, may have something to do with the killings just because the smiley face is in the area. That don't mean nothing. You know, like I said, I think that it was planted there for them to be, for the American public to be thrown off the trail, getting too close to what actually did this. Even though they probably would never figure it out, but at some point somebody will. And it will be a theory that is actually fact. That's the part that gets them. If someone comes up with a theory that says, okay, it's not them, it's this. They know that they're getting close, but they know still for a fact that they don't actually know what it is. They just speculate because of what the nature of the death entails. I'm just saying, 
it's so much to even think about when it comes to these cases. A lot of them are very creepy circumstances. A lot of them have creepy answers to these creepy circumstances. You know, but you got to ask the creepy questions to get these creepy answers. You know, you're not going to be able to solve a, a crime like this with logical questions. That's, it just can't be done. I mean, you can do it, but all you're going to do is just rule out everything that has anything to do with logic or humans. So, once you get rid of all that, and all that has been exhausted, what else you got left? You have the unknown, you have the unexplainable, and you have weird questions that you need to ask. Like, why is this person either face down or face up with hardly no clothes on, but their socks are clean? And almost every person in every state is being found the same way. They're both about the same age in their late teens or early 20s. They're in college, very well-rounded, very educated, very good in sports, very nice guy, or nice, well, mainly a nice guy, you know. Yet you're dead in a body of water. I'm just saying. You're all these things, but yet you're dead. So who would want to off someone of that caliber. Why would anybody like that need to be dead? Is that person who they are a cover-up for who they truly are behind closed doors? Could they be some maniacal drug dealer maybe? Or what, he's just dealing with some bad people? Who knows? He could, uh, his entire personality, his individuality could, could have just been an act. So it wouldn't, nobody, so it could throw people off of what he was truly doing behind, you know, behind the camera or behind closed doors maybe but I'm not saying that's what it is but that's just a theory and it could be a good one if that was the case but I don't think that it is because he was too much of a good person everybody said it you know he wasn't that kind of person but yet you seem to disappear right before your girlfriend turns the corner to pick you up right after that as soon as your phone dies you're gone in a crowd of people that's walking down on the street. Now, maybe this person that said 99 Not Shoe Street out loud was the person that was actually hunting him. Maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe this this is a human element. I don't know. But there, are too, there aren't too many humans that I know of who kill people that leave behind no evidence whatsoever. No trace. No trail that leads back to maybe the, where they are. Yeah, you find a body at some point because somebody else you know, discovers it. But it's what happened between point A and point B is the mystery. That's the most important part. But because we don't know how that could have happened, it's a complete mystery. The person probably don't even know. Of course they can't know because they're dead. I don't know people. I just don't think that they have something to do with this. It just it just sounds too Oh, I want to take credit for this. So let me just put a smiley face right here. This, this will really throw people off. Smiley face, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Well, two eyes and a mouth. You know? That sounds like something somebody just came up with. Smiley face killers. Okay, you got people like Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy. They didn't use names like that. They use their own name because they didn't care. All the other serial killers, they were killing people because that's what they enjoyed doing. You know, it wasn't because... They were mad at people. Some do, but these people, they were, it was pleasurable to them. They had to do it, or they felt like they had to do it. That's what darkness does. It makes a contentious thought in your mind become pleasurable to the point where you just have to do it. It's like trying to get an orgasm out of stabbing someone with a knife. I'm just saying, you know, these are the kind of people that do this and still leave evidence behind, like some blood or something like that. You know, even if it's just a tiny little speck, or maybe a tiny piece of hair, or a tiny piece of fabric that got stuck to the floor because you were trying to clean something up. Or maybe some hairs got on the bed, or it, the hair's already been on the bed and you just didn't realize that you need to clean that up too. You know, ain't no telling what could have been done. But, at the end of the day, killers leave evidence. No matter what kind of evidence it is, they're going to leave something. But these, you never know evidence. You never know who did it. You never know how they did it. You never know why they did it. You just know that they did it. And the big question is who or what?
I still say what, even in a case like the Smiley Face Kills, because I really don't think they had anything to do with it. They just want to take credit for that crap. So if that's the case, I mean, like I said, there's always going to be some evidence left behind, but this is too clean. Criminals here don't do that. No otherworldly stuff, like interdimensional beings that want to feast off of our flesh, maybe. He wasn't eating alive, but something killed him. Yeah, they took something out of his body. Whatever they took, I bet you they're not going to tell nobody what it was. They're going to say, oh, well, you know, we did find that such and such a piece of, uh, uh, part of his organ or this and that, or other was missing. And then that's going to raise more questions. Why? Uh, we're talking about organ harvesting? Because that only happens with black kids, black young black men or young black women, or mainly young black men. So why would it be happening to him? Now, young black men, they're guts are completely gone. I'm talking about wiped clean. All you see is the empty shell that was their body when they're done with them. This guy, if that was the case, maybe it was a tiny little piece from an organ maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just just throwing stuff out there. You know, but I know that I, I don't I really don't think that you know, the smiley face uh killers had anything to do with this. I, I think they try to get credit for it. And there was stories about a man in prison that wanted to get credit for the death of a child. Well, nobody could ever figure out how it was done. But it turns out that he was just somebody trying to take the credit for it because it was a very elaborate crime that could have been tagged with someone who was a purveyor of killing. I'm just saying. But, you know, that's my take. Somebody wanted, they wanted my opinion on the smiley face killers, and there you have it, my friends. Uh, this wasn't going to be a very long video, but I just want to add my two cents to the mix and see what you guys think about the Somali Face Killers and if you agree with me with the points that I have, um, you know, put out there for you guys to hear. Um, I hope that one day they will find out what's happening with these missing people. I mean, now, I, meant to, I forgot to mention this on the last video, and the one that I did mention, I didn't, I didn't upload it, so I'm going to say it now. On the um, the TV show, the David Polite, uh, the Vanished TV show, um, they did mention the one thing that I have already said in the past on every video that I had, that I have posted about people who mysteriously vanish in national parks, and they said that there is definitely a wormhole involved in the disappearance of these people, especially, especially. Um, the guy who disappeared on the trail, um, darn it, uh, what's his name? They talked about him on the show, um, Carl Anders, Carl Anders. You know, I said the same thing about him. He just literally vanished without a trace. Now, anybody that would have seen him on that ridge would have been able to see him, would have been able to see him because it was all flatland. You know, there, there was no covering that could block his view from anybody. Even if you were looking at him from a distance, you'd still be able to see him with some binoculars. And let's just say you actually saw him right before he vanished. And you had your binoculars. And all of a sudden, his body just fades away. Like as if he walked behind a wall of snow. Or the snow got so thick up there that you couldn't see him anymore anyway. But no, you actually saw his body literally fade away into nothing. I mean, wormholes are very invisible to the naked eye. Okay, unless you just have the eyesight to see them because of the energy that it gives off. But uh, for something like that, for him, Carl Landis to just vanish without a choice, and it's been a total of like, I think they said 18 years since he's been gone, you know, and he's never been found. Something like that, it's definitely a wormhole. So for anyone that have maybe second guess what I have made what I have, may have said about wormholes being involved in all of these mysterious vanishings of people in national parks you might want to think twice about it because an expert a scientist uh, a son and uh, a father and son team uh, I believe their names were McCabe which is kind of odd because of Henry McCabe but still you know it's just kind of weird how um, a person named McCabe ends up you know investigating cases like this and I wonder if they're going to get to Henry McCabe since they got the same last name. <laughs> you know, because nobody really knows what happened to him. They just know they found his body the way they did. Anyway. But yeah, wormholes is definitely a big thing with these disappearances. People, 
I wholeheartedly believe that wormholes have a very, 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 very big, strong indication when it comes to these cases. I'm telling you, they have a very huge, they play a very huge role in these disappearances. It's just that so many people look for so many, for so much um, evidence or facts to indicate or state that wormholes get has something to do with this. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of belief in the unknown. Just think about it. Everything that the government is trying to cover up, they make you think it's a fairy tale, but it's actually the truth. Think about it. Whatever they want you to think of as a fairy tale or folklore, that's the stuff that they try to cover up, if you really think about it. Why is it that you got to be called a fairy tale or folklore? The same stuff that we think is real, but we just know that it isn't because of what they tell us. So if we get away from that and the way they want us to think and realize that everything that isn't real to us actually is. And the only reason why they, they it isn't real to us is because that's what they want us to think. They don't want us to believe that any of that stuff is real. Okay, like, you know, chupacabras and stuff like that. I mean, there's all different kinds of beings that have that were created by the creator in Gaia. All kinds. And human beings are just one of them. One of the many. Okay? Got all kinds of beings. You know, sentient beings, uh, interdimensional beings, human beings. Okay? Beings of light, beings of darkness. All that stuff is created by the Creator. Okay? And they all serve a purpose. We just don't know what that purpose is. You know? And some of them are here for contentious reasons. Like giving the government all kinds of technology thinking that it's going to take over the world. Yet, they haven't even been outside our own atmosphere. Because of a quantum bubble that is circling our, well, not circling, but surrounding our planet. You know, that keeps them from going out there. And they know it, but they don't want everyone else to know that they've never been in this space before. I'm talking probes and everything. See, there's a dark layer above the blue part, which would be the ionosphere. Uh, well, the top part. You see, the ionosphere or the helio. I think it's heliosphere or heliosphere. But anyway, uh, there is a dark layer above the blue part, which is still part of the atmosphere. So that part is the part that the astronauts actually be in, but they just don't realize it because of the quantum bubble or the quarantine bubble, which causes the stars beyond our atmosphere to look the way they do. You know, distorted or hazy, you know, the resolution is low, but that's the reason why. If we take that away, then we'll start seeing a lot more stars in the sky. And then you'll see an abundance amount of it. You know? A lot of people don't realize that. And you see, the government now is trying to take, they're trying to take blame for that. They want to have the credit for building this cage like net or bubble around this planet. They're not the ones that's doing it. It was the, the Grays. Because when they saw that atom bomb that was dropped in the desert, yet given to them by none other than. Um, Albert Einstein himself, they put this quarantine bubble around the planet and kept them from bringing that destructive nature into space. Because think about it, they always wanted to colonize planets. So imagine them bringing all this technology into space and trying to take over planets like how you see in the movies. I mean, look at A Avatar. Look how they did that planet. They tried to take it over. And look what happened. Good begets, the e good begets evil all the time. Okay? So... But anyway, guys, I'm rambling on here about, about a bunch of stuff that you need to hear, but, you know, that's not what the topic is about. But anyway, but that's my take on the smiley face killers. Not really that much to tell because I really don't think they have anything to do with it. Now, if they do and they find somebody, <clears throat> I'll say this. It could be somebody that wants to be known as a smiley face killer. They may not even be any smiley face killers out there. It's probably just somebody that saw the body, they put a smiley face on it, and left. They didn't even want to report it. They just want to get credit for it. So they add the mystery by just putting that smiley face on a rock somewhere or on a tree, you know, and it may be faded. It won't have to be a solid, you know, image, but they know it's a smiley face. So that's my take on it. I really do think that might be what's going on here because serial killers don't do that. They don't take the time to be that elaborate. They get in, they kill them and get out and hope they don't get caught. <laughs> that's the thrill of it. That's not, that's not a thrill. That's somebody being very crafty 
when it comes to a kill. You know, to a, for a human, it takes up maybe a couple of years for them to even get to that point where they can elaborately map out how they're going to kill that person. But they're not going to do that. It takes too much time. And at that point, they'll probably get caught at some point before they actually do it. <laughs> so they have to get in, do it, and be done with it. You know, so. But yeah, guys, that's my time. I'm going to get off of here. I still got the rest of my day to enjoy it. Well, the rest of my evening or night because I'm going to finish, try and finish cleaning up my house. And I uh, will see you guys later. Have a good one. Good night. Aloha. Mahalo. And a uh, wheel. Peace out, people.